Hi everybody, thanks for joining us on a Saturday afternoon. Today I'll be talking about the imaging features of uterine fibroids, as well as very quickly touching upon high-intensity focused ultrasound as a non-invasive treatment modality for uterine fibroids. So the uterus is a hollow organ, the bulk of which is, comprises the body of the uterus. It's connected on either side via the fallopian tubes to the ovaries. The uppermost aspect of the uterus is called its fundus, and at the lower end of the uterus is the cervix which connects the uterus to the rest of the vagina. So the uterus has got several layers, the innermost layer being the endometrium, which is responsible for thickening and shedding during the menstrual cycle. The main wall of the uterus is known as the myometrium and is made of muscle, which helps the uterus to achieve its function of contraction during labor. And the thin outer coat of the uterus is known as the serosa. So knowing the different layers of the uterus is useful when radiologists describe the position of fibroids for surgeons. Uh, also based on the location within the uterus, fibroids can present differently. For example, submucosal fibroids which are located just beneath the endometrial or innermost lining of the uterus can result in heavy bleeding during menstruation as well as subfertility in certain patients. As its name suggests, the uterine artery is the main blood supply to the uterus and there is one uterine artery on either side from the right and from the left. There is also a smaller ovarian artery which supplies blood to the ovary and in some patients can supply a small portion of the uterus. So when it comes to imaging for uterine fibroids, there are many different available modalities. For example, ultrasound, magnetic resonance imaging or MRI, computed tomography or CT, and x-rays. So how do you know which modality to use and when? Let me go through the modalities one by one. So ultrasound is our preferred first-line uh, screening investigation for uterine fibroids. It is radiation-free, readily available, cheaper than CT or MRI, and is able to make the diagnosis of uterine fibroids most of the time. Ultrasound is also very useful for serial or follow-up imaging of the uterine fibroids to look for any changes in size or increase in size over time, which will guide decisions for treatment or surgery. So this is a picture of an ultrasound that's performed transabdominally. You can see that the bladder provides a very good window to which the uterus can be seen clearly, uh, which is why we often ask patients to drink lots of water before a transabdominal ultrasound scan. Here you can see the uterus and the endometrial cavity, which is not distended within the uterus. And in the posterior wall of the uterus, there is a uterine fibroid, which tends to appear darker compared to the rest of the uterus. This is an example of a transvaginal ultrasound scan where the probe is placed within the vagina. There is better clarity and detail of the uterus and therefore we suggest both transabdominal and transvaginal ultrasound scans for increased accuracy. This patient, there is a submucosal fibroid which indents upon the endometrial cavity of the uterus. Finally, this is another transvaginal ultrasound image which shows a subserosal uterine fibroid, i.e. located directly underneath the outermost layer of the uterus, you can see that the fibroid protrudes outward from the uterus and is seen almost side by side with the rest of the uterus. Now, magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, is the most accurate investigation modality that we have for the uterus or pelvic organs in general. It's also radiation-free. It provides very high soft tissue resolution. You can also inject intravenous contrast which will increase the accuracy of the scan. However, it's expensive and there tends to be long waiting time for MRI scans. Therefore, MRI is often reserve, reserved for complex cases where the diagnosis of uterine fibroids is uncertain. There are other organs in the pelvis, for example, the ovaries. Uh, in some cases, ovarian tumors can mimic fibroids. And so we often do MRI when the diagnosis needs to be clarified. MRI is also useful in pre-treatment mapping uh, before surgery or intervention. Uh, provides a good baseline scan and after treatment, a repeat MRI can be done and a pre and post treatment comparison can be made easily. So this is an example of an uh, MRI image taken sagittally or from the side of the patient. You can see that there is the bladder in front, the spine or sacrum behind and the uterus in the middle of the body. Other pelvic organs are also clearly seen, for example, the 
bowel and the fat in the pelvis. This is an example of a MRI done for pre-treatment planning. You can see that there are multiple fibroids in the uterus. An MRI is useful for complicated fibroids where they are multiple in nature, extremely large. And MRI gives a good idea of the location, sizes, and the relations of these fibroids to one another, which is important for treatment. Computed uh, tomography or CT and X-rays are generally not indicated in the evaluation of uterine fibroids as they have poor soft tissue contrast. Oftentimes, large fibroids are incidentally detected on CT and X-ray, and at that point in time, patients will be referred for further evaluation with ultrasound or MRI. Moving on to a high-intensity focused ultrasound, or HIFU for short. Uh, HIFU is a non-invasive treatment modality for ablation of uterine fibroids. These high-intensity focused ultrasound beams are able to induce focal heating within uh, the patient's body, and when you use it on a fibroid, it gradually ablate the fibroid uh, over time. So HIFU can be performed under MRI guidance or ultrasound guidance. MRI is preferred as it provides the greatest real-time accuracy for ablation. Uh, MRI is also able to measure the temperature during the time of ablation to give an accurate idea of how much heating has been done for the fibroid, which will also guide the procedure. Uh, MRI, however, is more expensive as uh, MRI magnet or scanning time is precious because uh, the heating spot in the uterus tends to be only a few millimeters in size. The duration of the procedure for high full ablation tends to be very long, often three to four hours at least. So the ultrasound transducer will heat a spot that is a few millimeters in size within the fibroid for some time. Then you move on to the next spot and on and so forth until as much of the fibroid has been ablated as possible. During the procedure, the patient will also receive intravenous sedation and painkillers. The patient will be lying inside the MRI machine. No tissue will be removed. There's no skin incision. The dead cells and debris will be resolved internally over time. So patients who may benefit from HIFU include women who desire to get pregnant in the future. Of course, women who are symptomatic from fibroids with heavy bleeding or a sensation of mass or bloating in the pelvis, as well as fibroid sizes between 3 to 10 centimeters are deemed most appropriate for high full ablation. High full should not be used in people for whom MRI cannot be performed, for example, metallic implants or tattoos on the patient, patients who are already pregnant, and those who have got large, humongous fibroids where the uterus is extremely large too. And in patients where there is no safe ultrasound window for the ultrasound beam to reach the fibroid, for example, in extensive scarring, abdominal scars from previous surgery, bowel between the uterus and the ultrasound beam, as well as proximity of the fibroid to the spine or sacrum, as there are important nerves in that area. HIFU is also not without its risks, namely that of superficial skin burns, nerve injury leading to leg and foot numbness or weakness bowel injury, which can cause bowel perforation, fibroid recurrence, as well as a delayed diagnosis of cancer, should there be on the rare chance that there is cancer within the fibroid. Our local experience in KK Hospital, we have ablated 50 fibroids in 37 women. The average fibroid volume is 158 milliliters, and at each ablation, about 54% on average of the fibroid was ablated. There were complications seen in four cases out of 50, three with skin burns, one with foot pain, one with bowel and nerve injury. So we conclude that non uh, HIFU is a non-invasive treatment option for women who desire future pregnancy. The greatest evidence currently comes from China and Germany. Uh, in the local context, HIFU is not without its limitations. Careful patient selection is required to choose fibroids which are suitable and safe for HIFU ablation. Despite being minimally invasive, it is also not without an insignificant amount of complications. As with uh, most non-invasive treatment modalities, there is also a chance of fibroid recurrence and necessity for repeat procedure. HIFU is also expensive given the prolonged procedure time. Thank you very much. Do let me know if you have any questions at all.